I want to know why they offered Reggie immunity on both Tupac and Biggie's murders. Do that make any sense to anybody? Why would they, like if he ain't got shit to do with Tupac and Biggie murders, why would they offer him immunity on those, mur on those murders? Either he knows something about him, and you heard what Shook said. The same people that killed Tupac is the same people that killed Biggie. Or that was uh, at the scene. He said the same players was at the at both scenes. Now why Shook is gonna make that up? And remember, Shook always said he know who shot him. Everybody else came with it, and he said, or oh, it wasn't Orlando Anderson. And if he if Suge is saying the same people that was the same players of the Tupac shooting is the same people of the Biggie shooting, and if Suge saying he know who shot him, and then he said Ralphio Perez and them was trying to kill him. Who's to ever say that that whole Keefy D, Orlando Anderson pulling up in the car shit is the truth? Who's to say it wasn't the cops that pulled up on them just like they did on Biggie and tried to kill him? Should say it wasn't Orlando. And he said he'd seen who, who tried to kill him. So was it Orlando Anderson? At, at the goddamn Peterson Museum? No. Right? And if Shooks is saying the same people that was at, that killed Tupac, the same place was at Tupac killing is the same place at Biggie killing. Right? And then Shooks saying that Orlando Anderson did not shoot him. He know who shot him. And then he says later that uh, uh, Rafael Perez and Reggie was cool and they was trying to kill him. Who's to say that if Sugar's saying the same people that was in Vegas and that was in, in what you call it, and, and, and it was at Biggie's murder, they got shot the same goddamn way. Who's to say that that whole Orlando Anderson story it's bullshit, especially when Frankie said that he was told to say that he tried to snatch the chain the day before. How about what if Sugar saying that the, the police kill Pop and the same police they, they kill Big? Because he's saying straight up and down, it was, no, Orlando Anderson didn't do it. So was it Big Dre? And then that whole shit that Orlando Anderson reached over Dre, like, give me the gun. That old whole fabrication story. Or was it the police? The same exact hit, the same type of hit. What if what if Suge seen who it was and what you call it and and recognize the nigga and, 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 and told the nigga, Pop, your pop get in the back. And Pop probably tried to dive in the back or whatever. Who who is to say that it, it was all that on them? If 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 if, if, if Suge is saying the same people. That hit Tupac is the same people that hit Big. How could it be Orlando? He's saying it wasn't Orlando. I like to ask Reggie that. I let what? Shoot line?
And then think about this, right? If it was Orlando, do you really think Suge Knight would have gave that nigga 60 grand to testify for him to try to get out that child, knowing that he killed Tupac? Instead of paying that nigga 60 grand to blow his motherfucking head off for, ki for killing Tupac? Think about that. You saying you love Tupac that much that the nigga that killed him, you're going to pay him 60 grand to testify just so you could get out of getting out of that trial. That shit don't add up. That shit don't add up. What? I'm going to get a nigga 60 grand that killed my baby, my biggest artist just to get, get out of a, a parole violation? No, I'm putting 60 grand on that nigga head. Nigga killed Tupac. I'm going to pay this nigga. I'm going to get this nigga money to help me get. What? That shit don't even sound right. Get the fuck. And then this nigga talking about Orlando didn't shoot. So who did, if Suge is saying both parties was at both scenes and he's saying Orlando Anderson didn't do it those cops that was at the Peterson Museum the more undercover officers right then we hear that something to think about but Reggie I ain't got no beef with you brother I'm just doing I, I do current events all day every day man you know so please brother be easy, man. I'm not no snitch. Go read the paperwork, man. Stop. Don't do that. Don't put that on my name. I would, you wouldn't want that on your name. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Let's not let's not do that. You know, and you're making yourself look guilty. That that was like go pull up some paperwork on the niggas that did the Daz Go 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 try to find some dirt on them. Don't fucking be mad at me, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like Orlando Anderson or whoever yeah. I portrayed yeah. as the killer. You know, that's just the way we come up in this country. You know, we either come up as killers or we come up as and successful, you know. Of course, for those who don't know, Orlando Anderson was the guy who, who he had gotten into the altercation right. with in, in the hotel right. after the fight. And they alleged that he had actually pulled the trigger to exactly. kill Tupac. And he was killed, what, a year or two or something like that afterwards? Yeah, right after Pac. He was killed yeah. maybe less than two years after Pac in a drug deal going bad in Los yeah. Angeles. And he always denied it, but, you know, a lot of people believe that he had a lot to do with it. I tend to believe that he didn't kill Pac because yeah. I got uh, information from well, heck, very reliable people. Even if we let Suge Knight tell his story, he's saying that Orlando Anderson didn't kill Pop. Right, right. So I think we can weed him out altogether, right, you know? Right, right. So that's not how the story is portrayed. The, the way but, you know, when uh, they say the shooting happened there at the car wash hamburger stand of uh, Philandra and Willowbrook, that area, um, but he was found on the one street just... Over? Yeah. And the first person on the scene, Randy, was um, Reggie Wright. Imagine said, that. First person, man. And he was shocked when he saw myself and Pilcher there at first. The first unit to show up, undercover narcotics officers. Wow. You know? I did not know. Yeah. And uh, he was dead. They shot him up good. That's why I say there's conspiracy there where possibly he had him... He followed and called, you know, okay, he's over here. Let's do him in. Let's get it done. Wow. All right. So then there's another write up that Ray Richardson got a dying declaration from uh, Orlando Anderson. And what did he say? I funny. killed Tupac. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This was um, probably around, um, I'm going to say June, possibly July time frame. We were going uh, into the House of Blues, and, uh, you know, it was just a hangout day. We were going there. Pop wasn't performing or anything like that. And there was this guy there, and uh, it was a, a brother. He was a tall guy. And 
he was patting everyone down as we were going through that entrance. Hussein Fado is one of the uh, backup uh, outlaw singers. And when he patted him down, Fado had a gun on him. And it was a Glock 40 cal uh, gun, handgun. Pac was pissed. He was pissed. And he said, Frank, go put this fool into the uh, limo. The story picks up now with Kevin Hackey. Kevin Hackey has uh, said this in the uh, Fox interview that he and I did in uh, December of 2007, that that incident that happened at the House of Blues with that gun was that Reggie had him go over to Santa Monica PD, pick the gun up, and take the gun back to Reggie. About two weeks after that, I was contacted by Reggie to go over to Santa Monica Police Department to pick up this firearm. He stated once I gave him that firearm, he gave it back to his daddy, who at the time was a Lieutenant Compton Police over the uh, gang division. He said his daddy booked that firearm in the property. Kevin picking up, taking it to Reggie, Reggie giving it to his father. Paper trail ends there. Or the story with the gun ends there. Other than the fact that when Compton PD did a raid after Tupac's death in Compton, they found a 40 cal Glock in a bag. Okay, that uh, belonged to Orlando Anderson, I believe. Las Vegas Boulevard is packed. Gang of people. How did they get away? People around him and they, they all walking out the door. They, they mobbing real fast. And if you look at that video, you see Tupac in front of everybody right. walking like he, come on, man. And I was scared. I was scared that I would come to a town and I have the, the, the leader of the gang there telling me, what do you need? I was scared, but so was America. So was somebody else because all of a sudden I had all kind of legal problems. And you have to think about this. I had a clean record for 20 years, a clean record, living in the ghetto, in the gutter, no record. What about my morals then? What about my character then? You know, everybody can talk about it now and everybody is talking about it. But, you know, you hear that the police wanted Tupac because he was just Mustafa. This. Yeah. No. I've not been out of the paper since I've been, since I joined Digital Underground. I've been in, all, you know what I'm saying? It's never, my name has not been, not uttered. You know what I'm saying? And that's good for me because I don't want to be forgotten. And if I'm forgotten, then that means I'm comfortable. And that means I think everything is okay. What do you think Trey said when he walked back over to the, the Shug, Buntry, and Neckbone? What do you really, how do you think that conversation went? Well, like I said, I told Trey, me and Trey talking, I ain't going to, I ain't going to, what you going to say, Trey put him up to it. Tupac heard Trayvon tell, Sugar and Buntry now, Sugar and Buntry, that that's him. Correct. 
did they act as security? They were there to where if I get into a fight, meaning Tupac, if you get into a fight and you know it's two, three, four, five people or whatever, they supposed to handle their business. And their business was to do what they had to do. Even though I was the bodyguard, or even though there was a bodyguard, you know, for whoever it may be. Um, there were incidents that had happened at other times before where um, they would get into it and Pac, you know, would probably not even be around. Or he would be around. And it was just something that they would do because they were with him as his homeboys, his friends, whatever. You know, it's like if you and I and a bunch of people are together and you get into a fight with someone and we're all out at a club, you know, we're all there to help you, you know, uh, through this fight. You know, beat down, it's a beat down coming. After the uh, seldom fight, um, Suge wanted uh, to go ahead and leave and Pac was ready to go, obviously, you know, as well. So we walk out of the back area. Mike Tyson never came in the back, so we never met up with Mike. Um, we ended up leaving. As we left out of the fight arena area, as we got out into the uh, casino area again, the rest of uh, our entourage was out there waiting on us. As we um, walked up to greet them, which would have been... Uh, you know, all of uh, Death Row entourage, along with Tupac's entourage, which would have been the Outlaws and whomever else. Um, one of Suge's guys, his name is Trevon, came over and whispered in Tupac's right ear because I was standing on Tupac's left. Tupac took off and ran in toward the left in that direction of the food court. As I took off behind him and the rest of the entourage is behind me, Tupac comes to, at this time, I didn't know who it was, now being Orlando Anderson, standing by this planter, just like waiting. And Pac just ran up on him and, and then Orlando Anderson swung back. At this time, Pac's medallion broke. When he reached down and grabbed the medallion, I grabbed him and got him out of the fight. By the time the entourage who was behind me had gotten there, the footage that is from the MGM everyone sees, Orlando Anderson is on the ground and everybody's kicking at him, beating him down or whatever. That's what took place right after we walked out of the fight. And then from walking out of, um, I mean, from that incident there ending, the uh, fight with Orlando Anderson, because I knew the way through the MGM, because I was in the MGM walking around earlier looking for everyone, I knew how to walk us out of the MGM to the entrance. And I walked us out of the entrance as the tape shows I'm in front, Pac and Suge and everybody is following me now.